Happy 2023. Happy New Year, everybody. I am having the best year so far, five days in. So I am cutting out alcohol for the first month. Crazy. Also, reading a book a week, two workouts a day, healthy diet, seven hours of sleep, tons of content. Um, I'm going to be creating a course. I started a podcast, and I'm going to be building out this YouTube channel where I'm going to be giving trade recaps, live trading, education based off of everything that I have all up in here, and I've learned over the last, I don't know, 10 years doing this. So let's get right into it. So let's do a trade recap from today. Let's see how it goes, see how people, people like it, if there's any questions whatsoever. But not a lot to talk about today because the volatility is it's terrible. So today, jobs market super hot pre-market. That is ridiculous, right? Because the jobs market's hot, and the Federal Reserve is going to continue re- continually raise rates, and it's going to get more and more aggressive, and that is so damn annoying because that just means that the market's going to bleed from that. Tech is going to get hurt. Growth is going to get hurt. So a lot of these like, you know, technology stocks like Amazon, Tesla, Google, they're just destroyed. They're so destroyed right now, and it's almost like when does the pain stop? When does the blood stop? So personally, I really, really, really think that I'm going to be start buying a bunch of these assets because long-term, these are great prices. It's like a clearance rack at Target. I keep saying that because you can just buy these, hold them forever. You can scale in. If it gets worse, scale in. It's like Amazon's at $80. If it gets to 60, you can buy at 62 right there. Your average is 70 bucks and the all-time highs is 188. If it gets back up to that, you're up over 100% on your, on your position in just one stock. So same with the QQQ, SPY, like they're down 30, 20 and 30%. They're great things to start buying. You want to buy low and sell high, right? That's the ultimate That's the ultimate goal. But let's get right into today. Today we traded, so let's talk about what was going on with the jobs market. So I thought there was going to be a lot of negative sentiment. I looked at the pre-market data. This is when the market came out and said um, that jobs report, report was really high. So we dropped and then we dropped. And then uh, we started to stabilize a little bit here. I had a 379 support line from the daily chart. Uh, If I look at the daily chart, you're going to see a lot of chop. It's awful. Uh, A lot of lines here. But it's been chopping like crazy for the last couple weeks here. And it's not as long as this one because this was a ton of chop for so long. There was a couple big days in there. But other than that, it wasn't that impressive to me. So um, I've been waiting for this breakdown. I really want to see this 375 drop. I don't think we're going to do the above resistance line at 386 rip, but you never know. You never know what the Fed's going to say. You never know what news is going to come out. So I'm just playing the trend lines. I'm playing what the price action has given me. So I'm waiting for this 375 breakdown, and then I think that we're going to see 370 pretty quick. So today, when we opened up at, what was it, 382, I ended up playing puts right at open. I never trade the first 15 minutes. None of you guys should either. Because it's such a gamble. If you scalp in and out and you're really good at catching that reversal, you're in, you're out, your stop loss is small, then you know you're great. But at the same time, you're probably gonna get buried if you keep doing that. So I like to play about 20 to 30 minutes in because the most volatility is around 9:30 to around 11:15 ish, and 9:30 to 9:45, 9:50 is just a crazy wild circus thing. So if you're a gambler and you love that and you can read it, then all the more power to you. But the best trade I took, yeah, I did make money on the put the downside here, but I looked at the support line that I drew, 379, huge, right? We saw a massive sell-off, big bearish engulfing, so there's some more downside, more downside, downside, but a bounce. That bounce shows me that there's buyers in there. The buyers in there are showing me that they're starting to gain control, they're starting to like the price, they're going to go up a little bit, so price action is king here. Then I started to see a little bit more of a sell-off, I kind of got discouraged, but then again, I started to see a little bounce at my support line. So I was like, there's gotta be some sellers there or there's gotta be some buyers there coming in and we're 20 minutes in and we've only seen red candles and the news wasn't so bad. The interest rate hikes are implied to keep going up because of how aggressive the Fed wants to be with the labor market strong, but it wasn't announced yet. So we're just kind of reacting off of speculation. So once I started to see a little bit of buyers come in here, I took a contract of 380, 3840 SPX calls. They expire today. I always like to trade same days. If I'm trading Tesla or something, I like to do Fridays. If SPY, it's usually same days. If the market's really choppy and I think there's going to be a big move later on, maybe I'll do for a tomorrow expiration or next week expiration. Um, but in, or- in terms of today, when I saw this bounce, I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to take a scalp for the call side here. And I started to scale in around this bounce. Um, I waited for this candlestick and it was like right around here. My stop loss would have been below this 379. 
So that is where risk management comes in. You set a stop loss. I have the active trader over here. You can literally just set a stop loss at whatever price point. So if I bought them, I bought it for, I think it was 350 today. Let's see. Yeah, it was around that 350-ish level. I think it might have been 360. 360 is where I, where I cashed in. And my stop loss was at 310. So I had a $50 risk per contract. And that was it. And usually when it goes my way, I move it up so I only have like a $30 loss or a 20. And then once it goes really my way, I'll put a break even. So I have no risk. So it's always very, very minimal risk on a high profile potential play for me. So the risk reward ratio always have to be there for me to enter into a position. So I took it, we saw the bounce and then the bounce was like this bullish engulfing right here. So usually a massive green candle and a downtrend signifies a reversal. And I knew that I had something. So I really went right from 360 all the way up to 430. What is that? 440 actually. So that was up $80 a contract already. Could have taken that because I had a good amount of contracts. So it was quick money. It was really great. But like I said, this signifies a reversal and a bullish engulfing and a downward trend bouncing off the Bollinger Band. I love the Bollinger Bands more than anything. Reversal trading is the greatest. Um, and then I saw a jump up and I knew at this VWAP level, that was my target sell. So I sold at this, t this target VWAP level and ended up selling it for five. I missed out on a little bit of gains over here at 530, but I'm never going to time it perfectly. So I ended up making $140 a contract. Now, if you have 10 contracts, you made $1,400 in less than 10 minutes. And on the downside, you would have lost 500. So I had a $500 loss risk um, with a $1,400 gain. I could have been more patient, but I didn't like the negative data that was already out there. So uh, I didn't expect this to continue to run and it kind of bounced around a little bit. So I would have gave back profits and this spike came out of nowhere. I don't really know where this came from, but it went up to 850. That would have been crazy. So if you had 10 contracts there, you would have made, what did I have? 360 to 860, you made $5,000 in 15 minutes, which is crazy. Trading is like an up and down game. It's like a casino some of the time, but you always have to have that risk management on the downside. And that is why stop losses are king and they are your best friends. So I hope this makes sense. Uh, I'm going to do way more of these. Uh, I had a couple other trades today, but I saw this chop all day and nothing really happened. As you can see, they just kind of had theta decay all day long. They just kind of lost value, went up here and there. It would have been a really big scalp day. Um, and there's no telling when con when candlesticks are going to do this type of stuff out of nowhere. So I pretty much stayed away after the morning volatility, but either way, I kind of caught this downside. I caught this upside and then I caught another one up here, but it was really small. So I ended up taking five trades today. Uh, I'm swinging meta right now as well, but on the day trade, on the day trading side, went five for five, which was great. A um, couple scalps, a couple here and there, but this is the one trade I want everybody to realize because in any direction you see a massive green candle like that in a downtrend at the bottom of a Bollinger Band with volume coming in, that may signify the reversal. So that's a great place to maybe enter into a position, smaller stop loss in case it ends up failing the breakout. But this is a great indicator to look for that reversal trade that I love so much and it can make you a ton of money as you can see here from 300 to 800 a contract in 15 minutes. So this is the SPX. It's really volatile. Don't recommend it unless you're a professional, but same situation on the SPY. All these candlesticks and formations are consistent throughout. So hope that helps. This was the first one and I'm going to have a lot more live stuff. I'll talk through each one of my trades throughout the day. So that's it. That's all I got. I'm going to have a ton more, but let's make 2023 our bitch.